darcela duro, duro, duro. Capra ignorante. Hello guys and welcome back to the 26th episode of Italian Politician of the Week. I am Ipernik and I make weekly videos on Italian history and politics in English. Today we are talking about Italo Balbo, the first fascist in our series. I mean, okay, yes, there is him. Oh, for fuck's sake. It's the first historical fascist who was actually part of the black shirts. Happy now? Who am I talking to? So, Balbo. His history is overlooked to say the least among foreign history amateurs, which is a shame, because his career as pilot, minister, governor and commie beater is very intriguing. But let's start from the beginning. Balbo was born in 1896 in Quartesana, a small town near Ferrara. Despite what the fascist propaganda says, he wasn't a very good student. He showed promise when he was in primary school, but he got significantly worse as he aged, to the point that he never really finished high school until his 20s. However, Balbo wasn't stupid. In his youth, he enjoyed talking about politics at the cafe and bars of Ferrara, where he had a Republican and Mazzinian take on things, which is my sugar-coated way of saying he was a socialist. Following a similar ideological path to Mussolini, Balbo was an interventionist and a socialist, who wanted Italy to join the Great War in 1914, because of national pride and hope of glory and territorial expansion. When war first started, he was initially denied entry to the army, but due to the numerous war casualties, army officials lowered their standards and let Balbo in the in 1916. He was an Alpino for a year until he decided to join the Air Force in 1917, where he became a pilot and got one bronze and two silver medals at the late stages of the war. He came back home in March 1919, where he began to study social sciences in Florence and became head of a newspaper called L'Alpino. In 1920, after he graduated and earned his diploma, he applied for entry at the Italian Fascists of Combat, the fascist organization led by Benito. To Mussolini that later will become the fascist party. Initially he wasn't an official member of it, but he still got a job at the Ferrara branch, where he eventually climbed up in the ranks. He also marched along Mussolini from Naples to Rome in 1922, joined the fascist Grand Council and was... <clears throat> elected into parliament in 1924. Between 1926 and 1929, he was undersecretary at the Ministry of Aviation until he was promoted to minister, a title he kept until 1933. Before I say more about his accomplishments in government, let's talk about his political compass. Despite his initial republican stances, he sadly falls into the authoritarian area, due to his affiliation to the fascist party. However, he wasn't as authoritarian as Benito Mussolini himself because of his attitude towards the Jews. Also, I know that in the past I put Mussolini here, but his right position is more like here, since he was in favor of state capitalism. Alright, let's get back on to Balbo. During his time at the Ministry of Aviation, he worked on valorizing the courage of Italian pilots by hosting two transatlantic flights, one to Brazil and another to Chicago. He led a dozen of planes across thousands of miles in order to flex Italian technological advancements and establish diplomatic ties with the West by donating the planes used in the venture. Such deeds boosted his popularity significantly, to the point that Mussolini actually started fearing him. Balbo also had some disagreements with the Duce. He was opposed to anti-Semitism and the laws passed in Italy against Jewish minorities. That's because he had Jewish friends in his childhood. Balbo also didn't like the Hitler regime at all. In order to slow down Balbo's popularity, Mussolini imposed a limit on newspapers on the amount of times they could write about Balbo. They couldn't mention him more than once a month. Then he sent Balbo to govern the new region of Libya, which was at first divided into two, Tripolitania and Cirenaica. Balbo expanded the 
the southern border of Libya with force and diplomacy. He forcefully expanded onto the region of Kufra, then he was able to negotiate his way into getting concessions from France and England over the lands around Sama and Auzuu. Due to Balbo's popularity and improvements on the quality of life and economy, many Italians decided to move there. By 1939, Italians made up 13% of the entire Libyan population and mostly lived in Tripoli and Benghazi, where about 70% of the population already stayed. He built thousands of kilometers of railroads that connected all the major cities and awarded privileges to the natives that had served the army. His opposition to the implementation of anti-Semitic laws in Italy didn't disappear when he moved to Libya. He would often accuse the fascist council of doing nothing but to shine German boots. And when Göring went to visit Libya in 1939, Balbo made sure to show him all the great synagogues that the Jews had built there. He was also strongly against the war that was to come, since he knew that Italy could not withstand such conflict. But his plea was never heard. In 1940, Valbo was piloting his plane called Aymanu, named after his wife Emanuela, from Derna to Tobruk, where it was shot down by friendly fire since his plane was mistaken as a British one. Many mourned to the death of Valbo, both in Italy and abroad. Mussolini, in a bittersweet comment, described Valbo not only as a true revolutionary and a great pilot, but also as the only man capable to kill him. Two days later, a British plane dropped a message on to enemy lines, where they also sent their condolences for the great pilot. Many people, including Balbo's widow, Emanuela Florio, will call Balbo's death not an accident but a planned assassination. However, little to no evidence proving this, nor the contrary, is currently uncovered. Though, if you guys want to, I can make a video about it if we reach 30 likes. So, what do you think about Balbo? I personally think he's pretty cool for a fascist uh, historical figure. He certainly deserves more credit for his anti-war stances, but he's still a fascist. Um, I mean, at least he's not a new fatalist. Thank you guys for watching, I will see you next time.